got tight ends coach Blaine Stewart. Questions for Coach Stewart? So, Blaine, just give us a quick overview of, of your position, what the tight ends look like through the spring. We know Cole's not going, but what's everybody else doing? Yes, sir. Well, obviously, yeah, Cole, um, you know, coming off of rehab, he's doing really well. But uh, in terms of everyone else, you know, we've, we've really used this spring as a spring of growth. Obviously, that message has been set by the head coach about, you know, getting better in incremental ways across the board. So, you know, everyone's been, uh, been, been trying to get some reps, and, and, and we've really just been trying to take a stride individually and then therefore collectively. So, uh, you know, guys are working hard. Um, we're not really changing much of our, of our schematics. You know, we're, we're going uh, normal install um, first and foremost, which has been great. And, uh, you know, guys are just trying to get better daily and uh, just finished number 10. So got a couple more opportunities, but it's going quick. So we're, uh, we're happy where we are, but there's still a lot of work to do, obviously. What areas of work to do? What, if you could have magic wand and, and say, this is where we need to be better. Where? Yes, sir. Uh, magic wand, I, th I think collectively, we just got to grow in terms of uh, guys finding roles on the team. You know, I t I've, I've touched on that before. I think, you know, Traylon Davis, uh, for example, trying to increase his role. Uh, now he, he's getting a lot more opportunity to, to, to shine in the pass game as opposed to just, um, you know, kind of being the point of attack blocker. Um, young guys like Will Dixon and Noah, uh, their biggest thing is just proving that they're ready to compete at a high level this fall. So th th their, their growth is, is being measured differently. And, and that's more overall um, preparation for the fall. Um, you know, Jack, a uh, high school senior, early enrollee, he's kind of, you know, taking it all in. And, and he's been eager and willing. And, and, you know, his thing is just hitting the ground running um, trying to trying to match w what the older guys know. He's playing catch up, but that, that's that's fine. You know, everyone's on their own uh, path. So uh, overall, I would just say continuing to improve um, in in certain things that, that guys can find a role this fall. That's the biggest thing we're looking for is just proving that you're ready to help us. You've got some that are good pass catchers. You've got some that are good blockers. Who's the most well-rounded right now? You know, right now, Traylon Davis is in an excellent spot physically. Uh, he's made some plays down the field. I'm not sure if you guys were at practice in the stadium a couple weeks ago. Man, he probably had, you know, six or seven catches, which would have basically doubled uh, last year. Um, so Traylon, Traylon's in a good place. Uh, overall, you know, a guy like Will Dixon has great um, – has great physical skills. So I would say, you know, he's probably the most well-rounded in terms of size, the ability to run and stretch the field, the ability to play strong. Um, so th those are two that come to mind right off the bat. You will say it was a big spring for Will. Have you seen what you wanted to see out of his development so far? Oh uh, yeah, for sure. You know, Will knows, you know, the, uh, it's kind of time to grow going into his, uh, his third year, just his second spring ball. But uh, Will's biggest thing is, being able to play multiple positions, you know, a, a guy like Will to help us this fall has to be able to play, you know, 11 personnel tight end. He's got to be able to play 12 personnel both tight ends, uh, be able to, to play numerous spots in that. So, you know, Will's taken a step. There's still plenty of, uh, of next level execution, I call it. Um, you know, Will can get on the board and draw any play, but we got to make sure that in all young tight ends, that when that picture changes as of a defense, that you know the intricacies of the why. And Will has started to show that, and uh, it, it's only getting better uh, throughout spring. What, what is the, what, the hump for young tight ends to get over to where they're ready to play? First, you know, you got to know what to do always. That, that's the, that's the, you got to get off the bus knowing what to do. And then second, it's the confidence to execute no matter who you're going against. You know, when a, uh, when a true fresh, or I guess a high school senior, true freshman gets thrown in the fire and has to block Sean Martin on the goal line, like happened this weekend, you know, there, there's some trial by error there. But uh, I think the biggest thing is understanding your job and executing it at a high level, regardless of what the defense does and, and really, you know, uh, Traylon touched on it last week, kind of that welcome to college football moment. When the picture changes or the, it's not the look you anticipated, still being able to execute, that's when a young tight end is ready. What do you ask Cole Taylor to do? Obviously, he's limited in practice stuff, but mm -hmm. I'm sure classroom, things like that. What, do you, what are you working with Cole on? Cole and I are on a very uh, individualized plan, and we have been since January. Um, I think the biggest thing for him is maximizing his physical um, – you know, his physical development as much as he can push himself. And that starts in numerous phases. That starts with the training staff. That starts with the strength staff. That starts with nutrition and really taking care of his body. Um, you know, he, he's doing a good job pushing that and, and being ahead of um, – being ahead of schedule, I would say, on, on his rehab. And then in terms of classroom work, you know, we are studying what he did last year, 
we're studying what we want to, you know, kind of take to the next level in terms of schematics and, and skill set added to his, uh, his disposal. Uh, we're studying guys, you know, we're studying uh, former college tight ends that have, have came out and been successful earlier in their NFL career, like uh, Trey McBride out of Colorado State and, uh, and Laporta. Uh, who's now with the Detroit Lions. So we're studying guys. And, and, and my biggest thing for him is like, look, when you put senior film out there, this is what it needs to look like. Because those guys have obviously been very successful at the next level early in their career. And that's his goal. And that's my goal to, to prepare him for uh, the next level. And, you know, we're really trying to maximize classroom time, walk through time, um, doing some individual on the side, you know, during special teams or whatever period that may be pushing him and really emphasizing the things we want, you know, taking his, uh, his receiving ability to the next level, but also, you know, being more stout in the run game. And, and that starts with flexibility, which he's improved. That starts with, you know, mobility, being able to play with the lower base. Cause I mean, it's no secret that six, seven guys, no matter who you are, you gotta be able to bend. So we're, we're trying to take that to the next level, but Cole's on a, Cole's on a great trajectory to come back here uh, whenever that, that clearance comes and, and help us and, and have a great summer. That's our goal. How much did your time with the Steelers, seeing what they do with the tight ends and that influence what you're doing now and, and what you're incorporating in this? Uh, I, I think that shows last year, you know, we really did incorporate the tight end. Um, and, and that was kind of, when I sat here a year ago, it was kind of trust that we were going to do so. And I wouldn't say it was specific to the put to the my time in Pittsburgh, but you know, general football. You know, uh, Coach Brown is big on professional development, so we've studied college offenses, pro offenses. Um, like I said, I've individually studied tight ends. So we're we're trying to just take what fits our current system and how we can apply it to not only the tight end position but also the overall um, just just skill, uh, skill positions that, that that can help us schematically and put our guys in a position to be successful and let their God-given gifts uh, take over from there. But, but we have studied, you know, numerous levels, whether it's, um, you know, people in college are doing a good job or, or, or NFL teams or specific cut-ups that we've studied. You know, we're, we're, we're taking a general approach and kind of trimming it down to what fits us. How do you use your tight ends depend on who they are and what their skills are, or do you try to fit them? To what you want them to do? That's a great question. You know, I would say first and foremost, it's got to fit the overall offensive philosophy. And then, yes, it does. Uh, certain guys are going to be asked to do certain things. But when you've got a guy uh, like Cole who can do what he can do, general football for us, you got a guy like Traylon Davis who's, uh, you know, a really strong point of attack guy. You know, I, I got to be better uh, about trying to get him involved in the pass game. Um, but, you know, we just try to to fit guys, and it's no different than running backs with their skill set, receivers with their skill set. We're trying to put guys in position to help us, uh, whatever their God-given abilities are that we can maximize as a total offense. I guess the goal then is just to get a tight end out there that doesn't predict what you do. Correct. It comes back to the well-rounded part, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, well-rounded. And, and, and we were very thoughtful last year with our, uh, with our self-scout, uh, trying to not be predictable. Now, if it's third and nine, and we got 11 personnel with one tight end in the game, it's probably going to be Cole Taylor. But, you know, on first and second down, we were trying to be very, uh, very unpredictable with, with who we're asking to do what and our sequence of motion. So we're always trying to camouflage that as an offense. But I, I would say the more guys that can do more things football-wise, it, it just makes you a better offense and less predictable, as you, as you mentioned. You took over 16 months ago, whatever it happened to be. So what have you learned in that time, leading your own room, recruiting all those things in the college game that maybe you didn't have to do in the professional level? Yes, sir. So uh, first and foremost, you know, I think the biggest thing is time allocation. Uh, last year, you know, I was kind of the new guy on staff. So I was hitting, hitting the ground running with trying to get the guys ready for practice. Like you said, maintain those recruiting relationships, try to get top guys on campus for spring ball. Um, I think the biggest thing I learned is just time allocation and, uh, you know, just th there's there's never enough time in the day. So you got to be efficient with what you do. And uh, I think I've grown in that area. I, I felt way more comfortable this January recruiting uh, than I did last year. I know I only got out a couple days last year before the dead period started, but really excited for May. You know, I've, I've got a lot of uh, plans with the recruiting staff lined up for uh, for our May, you know, general, obviously area recruiting first and foremost, tight end recruiting. Um, trying to trying to get uh, things set up for official visits and things of that nature. I, I think I've grown in numerous ways, and that's just you know being put in the position. Uh, until you're really in it, you know you don't know what's the important thing. But now I have a good feel of kind of where we need to be on a calendar basis, where 
I should ask our guys to be in terms of football, in terms of install, in terms of uh, just growth throughout the spring. And, and I do feel more comfortable uh, this year. You mentioned time allocation. That's kind of interesting because a lot of pro coaches come back to college and they find, whoa, we don't have the time we thought we had with them. Whereas before in the pros, you had more time. I don't know if it's unlimited time. So I guess you have to kind of work smarter, don't you? Yeah, you definitely have to work smarter. You know, these guys still have class at one o'clock, uh, which, which is a great thing. So, you know, I got to be efficient with my time. I got to be efficient with what I'm asking them to do, what I'm asking them to, you know, do outside of this building uh, in terms of preparation for not only football, but, you know, they got a lot going on. We got the elite climbers that are busy, that are doing business proposals and guys are in grad school. So I would just say, you know, it's still football, but the biggest thing is I got to be efficient with what I'm asking them to do because, you know, there's a lot going on outside this building, which in any profession, people got their personal lives. But, you know, we got to make sure that when I have a 40 minute position meeting, I'm not wasting any bit of that time. You know, I got to recap whatever the previous day was, get ready for today and then, you know, show enough film that we can go out and execute, which, you know, I, I feel like we're, we're, we're doing a really good job as a total staff of, you know, not over installing but really putting our guys in position to be successful and, and build it so by the time we come out of the spring we have a whole bank of things to look back on and then prepare for throughout the summer how hard is it to find someone that checks all the boxes size speed strength uh, catching ability you know, that the tight end has to do and how much competition does basketball and power forward give to, to narrow that field down uh, I would say we we do love dual sport athletes, and that's one thing. You know, when I was when I was with the Steelers, that was a, a major point of emphasis. The, that numerous guys that have been drafted by the Steelers were dual high, high school sport athletes. So I love when a guy plays basketball. Um, I think it's a great way to uh, to evaluate too. You know, there's competition, there's body movements, there's leadership ability. So I love evaluating dual sport athletes. I would say you know there's not a lot of ready made tight ends available in in uh, at any level uh, you look at you look at major college you look at group of five you look at FCS and then you look at the NFL you know there's only a handful of guys that are the ready-made freaky show up day one ready to go projects so or, uh, products so you know there, there's projection out there there's development out there and, and that's why you know numerous things skill development off-season training all those are so important because you look at the landscape of high school football, there's very few ready-made guys that are going to show up a day one starter. But there's a ton of guys out there that if developed in the right system, you could take a guy that by the time he's going into his second or, or even third year, he's going to be a hell of a player. So we just got to do a good job projecting, developing, and then retaining uh, once they're here. Like a Dr. Frankenstein putting, <laughs> putting a tight end together? Uh, yes, sir. You know, there, there's different guys. You know, you can take a – you can take a big kid out of high school that, that may already be, you know, 250 pounds and reshape his body. Or sometimes there's projections on 210 pound guys that, you know, he's got the, the frame to hold the weight. Or there's a guy that's a, a receiver right now that's going to grow into a tight end. So there's numerous body types. And you're right, it's kind of, you know, finding a needle in a haystack of, a, of casting a big net and, and hand picking select guys that are going to come fit uh, your program and, and be ready to go by the time their number's called, whenever that time is. See, I know a brand. He's done an excellent job in terms of understanding the playbook, understanding you know what we're kind of asking his body type to do. Uh, obviously, he's he's playing all the tight end positions right now, but I see him as a guy that you know can model his game after Traylon Davis and really be a move tight end for us. Um, flex out in the slot, play what we call in the hip position off the tackle, move around, be in motion at the snap. Uh, he's done a really good job. You can see his uh, athletic skill set. Um, show from when he was asked to, to play basically every position at University High School. He's doing good. Uh, it's crazy, you know, uh, a year goes by quick. He hasn't even been here a full calendar year yet. He was playing high school baseball this time last year. So his best football is in front of him. He's gained weight. He's, he's north of 240 in terms of weight. So that'll continue to go up. And, and the more he gets comfortable gaining that weight and, and playing physical, that's the big thing I want from him is I want him to be a, a hammerhead and, and really take that, you know, off the ball tight end that runs counter, that runs split zone, and, and, and really sets the point of attack for us. I think he's done that, and I think he'll be able to do that for us for, for numerous years moving forward. You mentioned growth with yourself. You talked a little bit about recruiting. Mm -hmm. um, that, that was very new for you. So what, what did you learn with that? What were the hard pieces when you had to go on the road and recruit? You know, I, I think recruiting is a lot like 
people relationships. So I, I feel comfortable, you know, being able to, to go and talk in front of a high school coach. And it's it's unbelievable how many connections there are out there. You know, I'm I'm walking into a high school in rural North Carolina, and uh, there's a high school coach that pulls out a letter from my dad from 2009, and and he was an assistant coach. He wasn't even on my list. And we got to talk, and he was like, "Hey, man, look at this look at this letter. He used to come up here to uh, retreats when he was in uh, Southern Virginia." So things like that are unbelievable. So the the relationships that, that I've tried to build and, and cultivate over the last year ha have been good, and, and I'm thankful for you know those opportunities to to have connections with with a big network that I'm that I'm fortunate to have in coaching or or whatever. Uh, I think a big thing is uh, you know finding a way to never take no for an answer. Like trying to get a guy on campus, I learned I need to be the aggressor. You know. Uh, you, you'd rather them say, all right, coach, like we get it as opposed to being too passive. So I definitely had to flip that mindset of, you know, if a, if a kid can't come this weekend, well, I need to press a little bit more and, and really try to go through the coach or a, a, a trainer in the area and, and really find a way to, to push myself in recruiting. Uh, if recruiting is not a passive game, and I learned that very quickly. So uh, the growth in recruiting has been, has been great. Um, I think one thing that's been awesome is, is uh, the areas that I have, you know, I have connection with my Virginia and uh, Western Maryland from my time at James Madison and, and playing schools like Martinsburg and played baseball against Jefferson numerous times in high school. Uh, Western PA that I'm in now have great relationships there from my time in Pittsburgh, from people I know, like I got a buddy that played at certain high school in, uh, in Western PA, well, I'm going to tell the coach that, and then it kind of lets his guard down. And he's like, all right, I'll take care of this guy. So, and then going up to Buffalo, uh, Rochester, New York, building relationships up there through former Mountaineer alumni, I feel good about that. My time in Indianapolis, uh, I feel like, you know, you throw a dart in the Indianapolis schools, I know somebody that's connected to the program, whether that's a former Steelers coach or, you know, Pat McAfee or whatever. So I try to use every recruiting connection I can get to get my foot in the door and get a kid on campus and, and, and show them once they're here that, man, West Virginia is a heck of a place to be and, and you can achieve anything you want to in, in these walls. Blaine, did you have a welcome to college football moment? That's a great question. As a coach. That's a great question. Um, you know, when you are playing in front of 110,000 people at Penn State and you're on the silent count, and the first play of the season is two tight ends trying to block a first round pick. Yeah, that's a welcome to college football moment, you know. Uh, we ended up gaining about eight, so I was I took a deep breath and then it just became football. But that was a welcome to college football moment. Uh, one thing I learned too is, you know, you always gotta have a plan B. Uh, you know, Cole had a had a minor injury that made him miss a couple plays against Texas Tech. And you know, there's there's plays for Cole in the game, and you know, we still gotta go execute. So making sure guys are ready, that, that was a welcome to college football moment. Um, recruiting when you think you got a kid lined up for an official visit and then he calls you 48 hours before that's a welcome to college football moment that he wasn't coming so you know there's always there's always growth and uh, I would just say you know um, I'll still probably have some welcome to college football moments it's it's never ending but uh, it's it's been a uh, it's been a great journey and, and I'm just fired up and, and thankful and you know gonna be just as eager as I ever was uh, going into full year number two one more recruiting, just the, the quantity of people you all targeted and tried to get here. I understand that, but it's it's not like they all fit into one canister. They're different sizes, abilities, I'm assuming, too. How much of that is what you're talking about, where you might not have an ideal that's ready to hit the ground as a finished product, but he starts at this and you can add that, or he starts at that and you can add this. Like There has to be something, I don't know if it's a core, but there has to be like a foundation you can build off of to get toward the, the all around. No, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I hear what you're saying. So the biggest thing I would say with that is there are non-negotiables to the position. You know, size is one, athletic ability. Now, they, there may be different, you know, levels of athletic ability, right? But just looking at this last class, Jack Marco, we needed a big human being. So when I'm recruiting, if they didn't check the initial boxes of the size we needed for the on-the-ball tight end that was our goal to sign in this class, you know, there, there could be great players that, that didn't really fit that. So I would say it, it, it all comes back to the vision of what you're trying to get in a class. It's no different than an NFL draft. You know, if you got a guy in Pittsburgh like Pat Fryermuth, well, you drafted Darnell Washington to be his complement, right? They, they, they go really well together um, in their – matching skill sets to, to combine for a great tight end room. So that that's key right now in our recruiting. Um, I kind of tier them into different categories. You know, big human being that has athletic ability, 
best football player available. You know, we may give up an inch of size and maybe 10 pounds of weight, but if he's dynamic with the ball in his hand or he's explosive, you know, he'll be in that category. And then it just it comes down to pairing up, you know, the finished product of what you want a recruiting class to look like. So I, I think um, there are non-negotiables of the position that everybody's got to check a certain box. And then from there, you kind of tier different guys into, all right, this, this is our big group that we're recruiting. This is our kind of smaller guys that we envision becoming this category and go from there. You know, it's, it's all about the individual player and how they fit in our program and vision. You doing fullbacks? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Yeah, we, we got some fullbacks going on. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about Colin McBee. So uh, I would say Traylon Davis, uh, first and foremost. You know, if, if we lined up there and threw a couple extra linemen in and it was a big goal line set, Traylon Davis, uh, like we had two fullbacks last year with Luke and Traylon. Traylon will still have some fullback in his game, and we're trying to add to that. But Colin McBee has done an excellent job. Um, he's done a good job really knowing three positions. He can play tight end in certain personnel groups. He plays fullback when we go uh, tight end in a fullback sets. And he's also you know, played running back before from his background his freshman year with Coach Scott. So Colin's done a great job. I think he's going to find a role similar to Luke Hamilton. You know, I don't want to put a number on his snap counts this year, but uh, I would feel very comfortable with Colin's ability to go in and in specific you know, down the distance packages, whether it be third and short or on the goal line, and have the ability to run the lead blocking like we asked uh, Luke Hamilton to do last year. They're, they're very similar. And uh, Colin's still a young guy. I, I feel like everyone loves him, and he, it, that makes me think he's been here forever. No, he's still a young guy too. So he will con only continue to get better. He's excellent in the weight room. He's a smart young man. He's a great kid, and, and he's well-liked. So, you know, we got to find a role, and i got to make sure I push for a role for Colin McBee, and I'm excited about him. The trailing, how do you know, or I guess how do you feel like you know when a guy is ready to take on a bigger role as a receiver when he hasn't had much opportunity to do so? Yes, sir. I, I would say the first thing that I noticed coming off the bowl game this year when we were back in January is, is his development with his body physically. He's really dedicated himself, and that was one of the things we talked about in January. You know, he's always kind of been the, the you know, big, strong, you know, love his love his physicality, but if he wants to take that next step, we kind of we in work with our nutrition staff. There's a recomposition process of his body, and he did that. He didn't lose any weight, but his body fat went down by about three percent. And you see it in the winter drills of change of direction, and you're like, all right, Traylon's moving pretty good. So, with Cole out, when we put one tight end on the field, you know, Traylon's the first to to take the ball uh, this spring. So. I'm like, hey, let's go. And, and I'm, the, I'm the type of guy that I'm, I'm going to have to be proven that someone can't do something as opposed to put him in a box. So we, we've tried to put him in spots. And you know he's done well. He's taken steps. There's definitely things he's seen that he's like, OK, I need to improve on this. And he, he feels that uh, throughout the spring. And, and I just think putting him in a position to show it as opposed to say he can't do it is one thing I got to do as a coach. And, and that's been my goal for him. But he's done the work. And now it's just you know, reaping the benefits and taking it to the next level. All this conversation about players maybe growing into different roles or positions, where does T.J. Johnson kind of figure into – I know he's a receiver now, I guess, but mm -hmm. is he definitely a receiver? Could he be a tight end in the future or is it TBD? Uh, no, T.J.'s doing a great job. Um, he has the flexibility to play both. He's played some outside receiver, some inside receiver. Um, still, he's, he's weighing a, a, a good bit. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where he's at, but he could, if, if we got in a pinch, come back to tight end. But right now, T.J.'s just focused on doing a good job and trying to find a role, whether that be outside or inside. Um, and and we'll, take the, you know, we'll take the tight end play uh, if, if we would need it. But he's doing an excellent job as a receiver right now for Coach Marshall. Okay, thank you very much.